Amazon, YouTube, and Netflix have three different models. Um, they do original content, but they do it in, in a different way. In, in Netflix's case, uh, most of their content is not original. Um, it, only roughly 2% of their budget is originals, but they're increasingly spending more money. Uh, House of Cards, they made a $100 million commitment for two seasons, but now they've just signed to go to a third season of that, and they've got some other original programs. Uh, like Orange is the New Black and, and, and some others. Um, what Amazon has done is, the different model there is they basically have said, if you spend $79 a year to get free delivery of any Amazon product, we will throw in free video. So you can watch movies or some of the original Gary Trudeau series they've just done, uh, some of the originals like that, that, that you can do. But essentially, it's, you're not an individual subscriber. At Netflix, you're paying $8 you know, a month to be a Netflix subscriber. And Amazon, you're, you're paying the $79 for delivery. And we don't know, and they don't tell you, how many of them are watching video. Amazon is very secretive about its numbers. And, but in a way, what they're doing is what they did with the Kindle or with books. They subsidize. Uh, they give things at a low price to you in order to get you into their store to buy other things. Um, and they've been very successful at that. What YouTube does, uh, still another model, um, they, they moved away from user-generated content, but increasingly they're trying to produce more professional content. It tends to be of shorter form, you know, quicker uh, shows, et cetera. But they are buying product, as is Verizon and AT&T, and, and, and some others. So there's a, there's a lot of competition in, in that space. And increasingly, I mean, Reed Hastings of Netflix predicts that within just a couple of years, half of the television that we watch will be delivered over the internet. That's a big deal because it means that you can do binge watching, you can know more about your customers, and you can schedule for yourself. Uh, then the, one of the questions will be, and this is a big question, if I control my television set for the digital video I'm watching, um, and be it through my cable box or some other form, I can skip ads. What happens to, to advertising-supported cable networks, and particularly broadcast networks, that are reliant on advertising? That's a huge question because the people who are watching Netflix and the kids who are watching YouTube uh, and, or the people watching Amazon, they're, they've become accustomed to not having to watch ads. And in fact, half the people who have a cable box you know, with, with a PVR, ability to tape shows, are skipping the ads. So what happens to advertising-supported television? And if advertising-supported television is in trouble, Who's going to pay four or five million dollars an episode for some quality drama like, say, The Good Wife on CBS? Big issues out there. <laughs>